Well, it's been a different service, but it's been a good one already. And uh, I have a funny title to a serious message. Last week was about fire. This week's about faith. Faith, what is it good for? And before I even get into the Word of God, I'm going to share probably one of the biggest nuggets God gave me about this week. And then we're going to expound upon it for the Word, in the Word, and look at it. But in case you didn't know it, you may not because we don't adhere to all that crazy stuff around here. But there's faith movements, there's faith camps, there's Pentecostal camps, there's full gospel camps. I mean, amongst the spirit filled people, there's so many different camps, I can't even keep count of them anymore. And everybody wants to know what camp do you belong to, and I tell them I don't, I'm a nomad. I don't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't belong to any camp. I, you're going to put me in one, you can probably put me closest to full gospel, but even that don't really latch on because I'm not. Uh, just shut up, Pastor. And so, you know, we're not belong to camps, but uh, I do get asked to speak and teach in a lot of faith uh, churches and that uh, through for Raymond and stuff. And so, as you learn about faith, and how many know there's the gift of faith that God talks about? But God challenged me this week. He said, there's a difference between, uh, so he said, more people are putting uh, their faith in and their gift of faith and their faith in me. Yeah. I'll say that again. More people are putting their faith in their gift of faith than they are in their, in their faith in me. How many know it's good to remember what God did for you? you know, Daniel didn't run at the giant with his mouth shut. He said, the same God that was with me with the lion, the same God that was with me with the bear, is the same God that's going to be with me now. But the difference was, he said, the same God. And what happens a lot of times, we're like, Lord, my faith overcome this, my faith overcome that. And if you're not careful, it becomes all about your faith. And hopefully I'm doing this justice because it's something God dropped in my spirit. And let's just be honest, it's something that once you really start activating your faith, I'm not talking about to just people that are just starting. I'll get something for you in a moment. But it's something I believe all of us have to be on guard against. I believe it's something that we start, that if we're not careful, we'll fall into that. And God, and Lord, I said, well, Lord, why do you want me to talk about this? And he said, because I said so. I like to get to the. I like to get. What are you trying to accomplish here? He said, "I'm trying to get them to accomplish stuff." And he says, uh, keep, "The word says, keep their eyes upon the hill where comes their salvation and help." I, I butchered the scripture, but the, keep your eyes on me. Press towards the prize. Jesus is the prize. Amen. Amen. And it's through Him that we do all these. Now, I don't think most people are trying to build themselves up. I just think that it becomes something it, it, because if you try. You, 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 for years, to be honest, I tried to work faith and nothing happened because I was trying to work the Word instead of just live in the Word. Everybody understand the difference? Amen. Sometimes moving that 18 inches from your head to your heart is the hardest work. But then even after you get it there, we're human beings and we try to, we try to narrow it down to a formula <coughs> of how it works. I did this this time, I'm going to do this time, and God's going to do this. Well, if you can do anything, you can look at the Word of God and you can figure out God doesn't hardly ever do the same thing twice. He is a fluid, living God, right? So how many of those, if you start working your formula, your formula is bound to fail. Listen, His promises are yes and amen. I didn't say standing on the same word. That's not the same as the same formula. Come on. All right, Lord. Help me. So then it goes on to say, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, Eternal in heaven. Well, we're going to come back to it. I'm going to read you a different translation for a moment. I'm just going to shake it all up. For we know that if our earthly house, the tent we live in, is dismantled, we have a building from God. How many know you have a building from God? Yeah. A house not built by human hands that is eternal in heaven. And that is the house that matters. Amen. 
For in this earthly house we groan because we desire to, to put on our heavenly dwelling. How many are ready uh, just to be fully in the glory of Christ? But how many know you still have this temporal body? Sometimes this body acts up and, and the enemy and things bring up. Sometimes our character comes up. Sometimes things, it just wants to do stupid stuff. Anybody have a body sometimes that wants to do stupid? Other than me? That's why we need a Savior, right? That's why he, His grace is sufficient. But the more that we put on Christ, the Bible says put on Christ, the more we put Him on, the less that guy has any power in this realm. And then we start bringing from heaven to earth inside us because we've got more of Christ evident in our lives flowing through us than what that old guy is. But if we had to say well, nobody has to deal with that guy, we all would be a liar. And the stronger I get to God, whenever He shows up, the enemy makes me feel even worse than what He did when I was just a, a, a baby Christian. Really just, I look back and I think, dear Lord, was I even saved? Yeah. But I was. Come on, are you with me? I, I, and I'm not condoning it. If I did that stuff today, I'd split hell wide open because I know better. And He's convicted me of it. He had not convicted me of it then. I thought, dear Lord, I had some loving brothers and sisters in Christ. I, they didn't take me out and beat me with the Bible. I did some stuff that I thought, man, look back, I thought, how in the world? Are you with me? It's all free. Put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, after we have put on our heavenly house, we will not be found naked. See, when you put on Christ, He covers up all the mess so that all that ugliness is not exposed. And not only that, he start, you start becoming more like Him every day when you, the longer you serve Him. Amen? Amen. For we, it, we groan while we are in this tent since we are weighted down because we do not want to be unclothed. Why we cast our cares upon Him like we said this morning, right? Because that when that's, this whole body can get to certain things the way we think and come in and he can get us weighted down. It's just going to happen while we're here upon this earth. But that's why God put it in His Word knowing that, that we can cast our cares upon Him, right? Just some good teaching this morning while we go through this. Because we do not want to be unclothed, the clothes, so what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Life, what is life? The Spirit of God, the life of Christ, the Holy Ghost. How many want, how many want, the Bible says, I must decrease and He must increase. It's all throughout the Word. We see it, but it's something I'm afraid we don't talk about much in Christ. Everybody wants to either talk about being in full glory in or being complete heathen. How about all of us that's in the middle still trying to grow and be like Jesus? I love being in the glory in. I love being in that place, but sometimes my old mortal body still shows up. And i got to go put on more of Jesus. I realize I, I preached the message years ago, uh, last year, maybe, so I remember you know, part of my hind end's hanging out or something, you know, but you're not showing your hind end and you need to go with some more Jesus on. <laughs> Nobody's ever been there, huh? Oh, yeah. But how many don't realize that you need to put on more of Christ means you've got enough Christ in you to realize that? That's free. You'll think about it later. <laughs> Now the one who prepared us for this very purpose is God who gave us the Spirit as a down payment. Holy Ghost. Therefore we are always full of discouragement. Nope. Always full of courage is what this translation says. Do you know there's sometimes... Now here's the thing. Notice this. We put on the body of Christ, right? We put it on. We're clothed in it. And then he says we're always full of courage. Uh, I have to be honest, I, I, when I, as I was talking to God about this, I said, Lord, I'm not always full of courage. And he said, well, that's just because you got the wrong dress on. You got the wrong suit on. Come on, I'm going to say it again. We're about to get this. If you walk in the Spirit, if you have faith, you know, and everybody says, well, you don't have enough faith. You don't have... No, the truth is that you got the wrong clothing on. You're going to have to go, the Bible says, 
Somebody says, I need some more words. The Bible says, renew your mind with the Word of God, right? As you renew your mind, you're putting on the new man and shedding off the old man, right? Now, what I found is the longer I serve God, the more I'm around people. Nobody wants to admit that they need any help with that because they think that makes them less than. And the sooner all of us realize that we're all just a bunch of heathens working to be better to look like Jesus, that don't really, that's not really honest. We're just kings of God. I was trying to make a point, but that really doesn't go live with the Word. But I mean, how many know we're king's kids? Amen. Yeah. And the truth is, is that uh, my flesh man died a long time ago. If you try to meet Brian Williams, who was the drug lord and all the other things, he died so long ago, none of those people recognize him, and I don't either. You might come meet Pastor Brian, because, and, and I can't even think like that guy thought. Because I'm not the same man. So most of you, you're not the same people you were when you came here 11 years ago, 10 years ago. I'm not the same pastor you had 10 or 11 years ago, because I, I'm still growing in God, and He's still working on me. But if we... We, we have to, how do you know you need to put something on? You realize you got a short somewhere. You realize there's something hanging out. The Bible says if you judge yourself, you won't be judged. This ain't any part of the notes, but how many know it's a good time? Right now, the, the enemy is coming in with a spirit of fear like crazy. As I preached the, er, the first part, it's time for the church to rise up and be movers and shakers with the anointing of God. But we're only going to be able to do that by walking in the Spirit. And for years, I've heard it preached it's either one or nothing. Well, what about the people that are growing? Come on. I have never, you know, if I believe if we're walking with God in the Spirit every day, we're going to be like Enoch and caught it. I believe you can get so close upon this earth that mostly nothing but Jesus shines out like Peter did in his shadow here to heal people. And to be honest, that is my goal. But man, I keep finding more and more of that old other guy. He, he's he just still around sometimes. Are you all with me this morning? Glory. Let's get on to But what happens, though, is you start putting more faith in your faith in God's and then a lot of that is is because we don't have a good look what this verse says here. Because if your faith isn't working, there's usually a reason behind it. Or maybe you put more faith in you than God. Amen. I, I know people that said, now listen, I know a lot of anointing men of God, and I know there's gifts of healing, and there have been certain men that I know if they laid hands on you, they would be healed, and I know these things. But I've also seen throughout the years as people were built up that they wouldn't let anybody pray for them but this guy or that guy or this one or this one. And how many know the gifts of God? They're, they're, they're open to anyone to use. Now there is ones that people have more of and those things, but uh, I'm not going to tell God who to use and how to do His work. Y'all still with me? Okay, Holy Ghost, let's wrap this up. Therefore, we are always full of courage, and we know that as long as we are alive here on earth, we are absent from the Lord. I mean, as long as you know that God is with you, your courage. I mean, oh, this ain't our home. And too many times, I believe that the church, especially over the last few years, has tried to make this their home. And I can bring heaven to earth, but this place is never going to be heaven. Right? I can experience taste of heaven here, but I can never fully experience heaven until I get there. My spirit man will not fully be at home until it's back where it belongs. But I can be full of courage knowing that I have a piece of heaven with me, inside me, that goes wherever I go. But it's not the same, right? It's knowing. Because I have faith in who? In Jesus Christ. How do we get saved? By the faith in God. Sometimes I believe we've got to come back to just some simple realizations. It sounds so simple. It seems like, well, Pastor, that's a, that's a, that's a no-duh. But so many times we... Uh, we, we get so wrapped up trying to be or do something or thinking we have to work these things. And God says, you just got to believe that I am who I said I am. I can do what I said I can do. My faith, and you have faith. He, he, 
He said, by your, my stripes, you could be healed. Is that what it said? No. He said, you should be healed? You are. You are. Past tense, already finished at the cross, right? Now, who in here has ever had to resist against any kind of big sickness, disease, life-altering? And somewhere in there, did the enemy try to destroy that verse for you and tell you that worked for everybody else but you? He didn't mean it. I mean, come on now. Must be something wrong with you, or you'd already be healed. You must have done something. You know, is that really what it means? Maybe it means this. He tries all kinds of things, but what happens whenever you start believing it's a sure word? See, that's when faith gets activated because you reach over into the unseen realm and bring it into the scene. Not because who you are, because his word says. See, what happens, our faith can be shaken when it's conditioned upon who we are. But our faith is unshakable when it's conditioned upon who He is. No matter how many great things God has done through me, it's not my faith that's done it. A lot of people, I want Pastor Brian to pray for me. Well, you know what? You better hope I've been in tune with those kids. <laughs> when, I, but when, I, when I come, I'm coming full of the Holy Ghost so that God can flow through me. I'm just a good conduit. Amen. And we all just need to be a good conduit. Amen. Amen. Y'all still with me this morning? Is this, is this ministering to anybody this morning? Am I, am I hitting the mark anywhere for anybody? Good. For alive here on. For if we live by faith, not by sight. Now, when you look around in the world around you today, if you turn on the news, you, if you watch the news for two days, if you're that crazy of a person, you're that dangerous to watch the news for two days, read all the newspapers, stay on Facebook for two days, just uh, two days. What do you and, and don't read your Bible? Don't worship the Lord. What do you think is going to happen to your spirit, man? Now listen, years ago it wasn't this way. You could talk with I'm just saying you took two days. What do you think is going to happen in this time in this time we're living in? You will be so full of fear and shook up and distraught and angry, I believe. Maybe not, maybe take you longer. I don't know about angry. I don't know what level. I'm not trying to whatever your brain's trying to put the extreme on, I don't know. But what I do know is by the Spirit of God, it's going to physically affect you. Because you will start walking by what you see, not by what you believe. Right? But now is a time period when what you believe is being tested. <coughs> right? Everybody around is. So right now, it's not about what you think the Word says. It's got to be about what you know the Word says. It's not got to be about because He did it this way last time. It's because His Word says He will and that's all that matters. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. What makes you think you're going to be the first? I've come closer. Listen, I've come closer. Well, I'm going to be real honest. As a man of God, there's been some time periods we were down to nothing and no food. And as a man of God... and God has called, the just shall live by faith. That's how He's told me to live. I'm not saying that for anybody else, but that's what He's told me to do. And uh, we've got to knock on the door. There was groceries or $300 or whatever else. Now, what about if I told God that had to show up in the offering plate? What about if I told Him it had to come this way or had to come that way? I hope you're getting something from this. But I learned, I don't care how he does it. I don't care what he moves. I don't care who he works it through. It's not going to offend me. Amen? Amen. But, how many realize that we have to put our faith in God? And if you've been serving him quite a while, if you're not real careful, you can put your faith in you. But I want to encourage you to start reasserting your faith in who God is. And if you're dealing with something, if something is troubling you, go find it in the Word of God. Now listen, I'm sure you, most of you have been doing that. You've been coming here a long time. I'm not sure it's not the first time you've done that. But I want to encourage you to 
restart doing that. I believe when we get under pressure, we slide there. Maybe you've never done that in your life. Maybe you've never done it. But whatever that thing is that's trying to grip you, go find and see what the Word has to say about it. If you don't know, come ask me. I'll give you, if you're still learning, I'll give you some scripture to stand upon. Now the spirit, the spirit killed, but if you start believing in it, if you latch hold of that, you say, you know what, this is who God, this is what God said. He is who he says he is. He can do what he said he can do. It's going to change something in you. Amen. All right. I I'm done. <laughs> Two messages a quarter after. Can't beat that. I pray you got something out of the last one. It was just a nugget God shared with me. I didn't know. I was like, God, oh, that's not a whole message. And he, he knew right how it worked today. And he's so smart. So I hopefully out of the two messages, you got what you need. Amen. Pastor Tammy, will you come close us and take prayer requests this morning? Close us in prayer. Thank you all for coming. How many got something out of the word? Encourage Pastor today. If this message spoke to you, then let me know. Amen. Amen. God is good. And I'm thankful for the word again today. And, you know, in uncertain times, you know, we're every day we're faced with the things around us, but. And we can walk in the fear and the uncertainty and upset and angry and things, or we can walk with, um, walk by faith, and that's what God's calls to do. As He said, walk by faith every day and not by sight. Sometimes we tend to get our sight on what's going on around us and every oh, how the world's turned upside down right now. But we have the security in God. We have the faith in God. We've got the. We're steady at it because we live in God. So it doesn't have to rock our world or shake our world. We walk in the peace of God and in the Spirit. So walk in that anointing. Walk in the presence of God. And take the peace of God with you and the Spirit with you everywhere you go. And, you know, we win in the end. So when we know that we win in the end, then you, we get to walk through this crazy world right now knowing that and having the confidence in Christ. And so he was saying, he, the verse he was saying about walking in confidence, uh, verse 6, therefore we are always confident or courageous, as he was saying, so we get to walk that out. And so I'm very encouraged in that. So don't, don't let those things come in. But if they do come in, you get back in the Word, you, you get your peace back, get back in the anointing, get back out of your, your flesh, man, get back in the spirit man and get your eyes focused on Jesus because we win in the end and we're victorious when we get our confidence back in Jesus Christ and not on what's going on around us or all the crazy things we're hearing or who's making what decision out there uh, over our lives but Jesus reigns he rules he's at the right hand of the father and all authority we have authority just as Jesus has authority we can live this victoriously so that encouraged me, and you know, when I have those days where I'm frustrated with how the world's going, I, I can raise myself up with the Word of God and say, yes, the Word of God. I can walk in all these ways and with the anointing. Amen, amen. Anybody else? I, I want to prayer requests. Um, anything that you guys got from today that you want to um, share that maybe stood out to you this morning? I just want to give everybody a free. You're all good. Bonnie? <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, but... Pastor was talking about you got the wrong suit on. All I could think of was Tony Stark and Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> when you put on the armor of God, you become Iron Man. You, you know, become Iron you're Man. You're invincible so. and you have more power yes. than you have before. Yeah, I was looking back your hair. Yes, clothe yes. yourself. Yes, you're. You got it. Yeah, you're totally. You're covered. You're rock solid. You're out there. You're yeah. conquering. You're. You're covered all around. <laughs> Completely covered. Not exposed. You're covered, and you got it. Your head's on. There you go. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else got a nugget they want to share? Sister Joyce. Well, whatever he's talking about today made me think about that I should have be more spirit-filled. Amen. Amen. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. We, we've got to go spirit-led fully, head-on. And in these times, 
just more so and just mm -hmm. have at it. Put that flesh man to rest and walk in the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 All right. Anybody else? I'm going to give everybody a chance if anybody wants anything to share. Okay. All right. Any prayer requests this morning that we can pray over? Sister Becky. Just there. Okay. So Donna. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Issues with back. Okay. All right. Okay. Still working. Still working. Yeah. Okay. All right. Who needs to see your hands? Okay. All right. We can do that. All right. See anybody else? I'm gonna miss you. Bye. All right. Well, let's come in agreement. You guys got faith to believe yeah. God is healing. We're healed. All right. We're gonna pray for these individuals. Lord God, we thank you for your word, Lord. It's the sure word, God. You said that by your stripes that we're healed. We were healed. We are healed. And Lord, we take that by faith this morning and we come in agreement as a body, Lord, for Donna, Lord, to heal her and her body. Those things that are not functioning proper. You said all things work together for good for them that love you. So we come in agreement and believe for healing in her body that it become manifest in her body and transform those things that are, are ailing her Lord and to bring health and life back into her body Lord and we thank you for her healing Lord and we thank you for brother Kenny Lord that you just strengthen his back you gird him up Lord and those things that are causing pain we speak to those things we speak life to those areas and Lord that the pain cease and stop Lord right now and uh, Lord we just thank you for your just healing him right now on the back and touching him Lord to be able to go to work and Lord to walk and to do and move and function the way he needs to without pain in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for Monique, Lord. God, you know what's going on, Lord. And we just thank you for the peace of God in her life. We thank you even healing those areas in her life that need healing, Lord. And God, just rise her up as the mighty woman of God that she is and that you see her as, Lord. And we just thank you for touching upon those people, Lord, right now. We thank you for your word in Jesus' name. We all said amen. 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 Well, be blessed. We will see you next Sunday. Have a wonderful weekend.